Let's take a look at the process of adding content as well as managing the administration of the content authoring workflow. I'm gonna exit out of the overlay in Drupal 7 here, and I'm gonna click Add Content. In Drupal 8, I'll do the same. We have the same basic content types. I'm gonna click Article on both sides. There was a ton of work that went into improving the content authoring experience. So let's start from the top and work our way down. The first thing that we see is that the organizations of the fields are different by default. So instead of having tags right below title, we now have the body below the title. To edit the body, we also have a built-in WYSIWYG, which is so important for basic content editing. Instead of assuming that our users by default are going to know HTML and be comfortable with it, we can now give them a set of tools to create rich markup without having to deal with the HTML at all. In Drupal 8, we have text formats just like we did in Drupal 7, but one of the differences is that the text formats can have a WYSIWYG configuration attached to them. So for basic HTML, this is what we'd see. But if we switch this to full HTML, for example, we get a more full-featured toolset here. And if we switch to restricted HTML, the WYSIWYG goes away altogether. In Drupal 7, you could have achieved the same thing by using the contributed WYSIWYG module and then enabling either TinyMCE or CK Editor. Drupal 8 comes bundled with the CK Editor WYSIWYG, but contributed modules will be able to supply additional WYSIWYGs if you prefer a different workflow. So I'm gonna load up a WYSIWYG by going to the basic HTML text format. Let's look at how these buttons interact with the content. I'm gonna bold this, and I'll also italicize it. Notice how when we're in bold and italics, the buttons are highlighted so we can toggle them on and off. We can create a link. We can add a quote. And we can also insert a picture. The alt text is required in this case. We can align it, add a caption, I'll click save, and there we go. Now, if you're familiar with Drupal 7's file handling, the images inserted this way also get registered in the file registry. So Drupal keeps track of the usages of this particular file, so it knows when it's no longer associated with a piece of content and can be removed. I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit here, and I'm gonna add some content here. And I'll highlight it, and then we can choose a formatting from here. We can choose a number of headings or regular paragraph text. Let's add a heading three. And then finally, we can view the source. So if we're curious about the HTML structure or we want to add our own HTML structure, we can do so in here. And we can click source again to go back to the WYSIWYG. I'm gonna add a few tags here just to populate our tag vocabulary. And we could choose an image, but in this case, we're embedding the image in the content itself. Now, if we clicked save and publish, we'd see this please fill out this field here, and the cursor jumps to the title so we can input it. If we tried to submit some content in Drupal 7, without filling in the required fields, we would have to refresh the page completely before we get any errors. Also, this error seems a lot more invasive than just a temporary tooltip here. So I'll add a title, and I'm gonna copy this content over to Drupal 7 so we can have content on either side. I'll go to the source here and just copy the HTML and paste that in. In this case, I'm going to need to remove the image since we don't have that here. I'll add the tags and I'll upload the cat image. 